Hi there, folks. Welcome to Willis Gym. So today I'm going to introduce you to your chin drains. And if you look at my chin, you might be able to see that I have, in fact, two nice little drains in the tip of my chin. And these are your memory formation and memory retrieval drains. And they really help you think to have them open and flowing. And in the description of this video, you're gonna find a link to two different videos. And one of them is of Mosi Smiths, these guys in West Africa who forge iron like the way they've been forging iron, probably going back, I think we've got carbon dates now, 15,000 years, with no paperwork, no records or anything, just awesome memories. And there's another link to a woman with the, um, I think she might be with the Mosi too. Her name is Zanabu. Um, she is the brewer and she brews millet beer. And their chin drains are obviously wide open. The man, the, the smith, his chin moves all over the place. It's part of his language. And if you see her, if you look at Zanabu's chin, her drains are so open that one of them looks like a hatchet mark on her chin. And those chin drains are associated with something called the chin murda from yoga and the Hindu thing. And it's the index fingers or um, that kind of thing. And I'm going to show you the origins of the chin murda because I've discovered them in the tripedal human form that I call stone claw. Now the tripedal human form is the tripedal knuckle walk that humans did when they first came down to the ground. And by my estimation, this goes back at least 16 million years. Last common ancestor with the gibbon because the gibbon shares a similar behavior with us on this. And the tripedal form has been completely overlooked by paleontologists. They go from quadrupedal to bipedal. And I'm going to show you that not only is the tripedal form incredibly recent, but there have been tripedal forms of human evolving along with bipedal forms for now millions of years. And because we're a hybrid today, modern man, all of us have these tripedal uh, lymphatic drains that if we don't adopt the tripedal form, we can't be healthy. Absolutely. In fact, so much of Tai Chi, yoga, the um, exercises called the Sidong or the Qi Dong, uh, Qi building exercises uh, from China, this kind of thing here, the Murdas, all of this, the Shaolin, is all about this kind of thing is all about recreating the tripedal locomotion and tripedal stances that create a lymph flow that led to our line. And I'm gonna show you today the chin murder in this tripedal form. And it's about time you met my creature named Stoneclaw. Now, Stoneclaw came down to the ground. Like I said, he was a little tiny thing, this ancestor of ours. And Stoneclaw came down probably with a bamboo version of this. But as soon as he got down to the ground, he got himself one of these. Now, he probably didn't get his on Amazon. He probably broke open some rocks. And a very simple smash produces these little flakes that you find all over India, all over parts of the Horn, Ethiopia, South Africa. This is huge in Morocco. They would have been wrapped with either some hide or some bamboo, but this is the tripedal human knuckle walk form. You see this here? Well, see that C shape? You see how I can hold my knife? That is how it hits the ground. And if we look at some of the Australopithecus skeletons a little more closely, I bet you you'll see this locomotion, which is you see my feet up on this front of the foot here? This is the natural stance for the human foot. 
And if you don't think so, take a look at your shoe collection. And if you've got a lot of heels that are about that high, because that's what your foot prefers, you're much more closely related, uh, um, recently related to a tripedal form. In fact, by my estimations, many Asians, most um, Europeans, um, and a lot of North Africans are all tripedal um, up until very, very recently. And in some groups, the females stay tripedal and the men stood up bipedally. But again, let's go back to the chin murder because it's so important. You see, more than likely there were versions with two knives, just like this. And this would have been pretty awesome because when you go ha 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 and charge, if you've got two of these babies, nothing's gonna mess with you. And this is the origins of like everything being afraid of man. But very shortly, we only needed one. And the reason why we only needed one is because of the women. The women were the big thinkers and they don't have any facial hair right here because they don't need any itching to start to get them thinking. And this is one clue as to why they don't have the facial hair. They're the thinkers. But you see what I'm doing here? I'm stroking my chin with my left hand and this stance is amazing for lymph flow. You see that my elbows have access to all of my knee drains. I'm pumping my calves, so I'm creating a flow. And this knuckle stance is opening up a downward flow that's creating a back eddy of lymph that is cycling from the right side, the powerful knife-wielding, weapon-wielding side, pushing over and I'm enhancing the flow to the left by stroking, now, chin murder, chin murder. If I flex on the knife and I use this posturing to sit and think, I am immediately enhancing the flow through a section of my brain that thinks, forms memory, and retrieves memory. And it's this stance, I call this thinking stone claw. It's this stance that was selected for and led to the duality of man. The left thinking and pondering, and the right is the with the knife. This is why we're right-handed. This is why we have this duality. And in the Western world, it seems to me that this, the right, has been co-opted for the noble cause, and the left has been made to feel foolish and weak for thinking things through. This started with the French, but it goes back a little bit farther than that historically but politically, you see that left and right division, and it is all about who we are and where we actually want to go with this. Now, Stoneclaw himself was a thinker and a very interesting fellow, and I'm going to be showing you some of the stances that this form allows, and it makes you really think about things when you see just what happens to your lymph flow in the positions that Stoneclaw takes to sleep, to work, and most importantly, the positions that Stoneclaw would have taken to worship, to worship God. Because I gotta tell you, that's like really, really important when it comes to man and where we started going. But um, more on that in the future. Thanks for watching.